Okay, now this first one is from is the Book of Iowa uh, by John Alley, uh, High Priest, First Church of Satan. It says, Knowledge and Conversation of the Holy Guardian Demon. Boisterous fools have written volumes on which they know little of. Iowas will clarify, laying arguments to rest. The Holy Guardian Demon, or Angel if you prefer, represents the Oversoul, or collective wisdom of the group soul during its human phase of evolution. Nothing more, nothing less. The term demon can be misleading because the Oversoul has not yet entered the demonic phase of incubation, and yet the initiate may still benefit from the wisdom of his guardian. The most direct method of acquiring knowledge and conversation of the holy, and guard, holy guardian demon is through the assumption of God forms. Let me explain the process. this process. Demons, or God forms, behave as energy amplifiers, equalizers, because they interact on a certain frequency or resonance unaffected by a cosmic buffer. At no time does the magician share consciousness with the deity he affixes his mind to, what the initiate is really doing is tuning his awareness to the God form's resonance. This creates a reverberation across all timelines in all the physical forms. The group soul experiences singularity for less than a minute. The magician is temporarily awakened to his holy guardian demon. He feels invincible, godlike. <clears throat> so, let's just move on. From the same book, uh, there is a benefit. A gift from the demon gods. He's talking about, um, you know, the things that you can ask from the demons, uh, gifts-wise, you know, abilities. There is a benefit, a gift from the demon god from whom you chose to resonate. You must ask for your gift once you've assumed god form. It is also important to know what gift the god offers. Let's start from the top. Satan or Baphomet grants any object you desire. Coins, expensive clothes, furniture, rare antiques, a new car, exotic pet, etc. No need to be specific. Babylon grants a protective amulet to be worn around the neck. You must be specific concerning the material the amulet is to be made from, its design, the kind of protection you desire. Iowas, Lord, Egan demonic, Lord Egan's demonic form, grants one astral projection experience. Lucifer gra grants in increased intelligence. Pan grants one sexual encounter with whomever you desire. Bakaras grants you your unpaid debts shall be brought to date. Aphrodite grants the perfect male partner shall come to you, etc., etc. Same book. Avatar, Sinners, and Saints. They have, down through the ages, been called by various names. Demons, Watchers, Asaras, Divas, Archons, Jinn, Nephilim, Shining Ones, Spirit Guides, the Gods of Olympus, Egypt, Babylon, etc. We give them masks, and this arises from our human need to idolize them. Man creates gods in his own image. You know, this is very common, <clears throat> and it's worth noting that in satanic texts, they usually will uh, use multiple names from multiple mythologies. Like, uh, you know, they'll use the Greek name or the Egyptian name, and then next they'll call them Lucifer or Azazel, using the names from the Hebrew and uh, Christian Apocrypha. Uh, so there, the, you could tell that they're familiar with the overlap that there's. These are actually the same characters because, like I said, in beneath beneath the surface, Hollywood Insiders that um, Apollo is mentioned in the Bible. Why would a Greek god be mentioned in the Bible? It's, it's giving you clues to the fact that the Greek god Apollo is just another name for a character who the Bible is currently mentioning. And then, then, it, then it becomes, uh, well, what about all the other characters, Zeus? And, I mean, what are they? do they have alternate names in the Bible as well? You'll find in uh, these satanic texts that they will use multiple names to, even in the same paragraph, even in the same sentence, to describe the exact same character. Uh, it's just because they know they're, they're free to do that. And so when you see me quoting from the Bible, Egyptian, Sumerian mythology, uh, the... Uh, a Book of Enoch, Islam, you should know that the reason is because they're not afraid to do it. They know that there's a bit of truth to every bit of it, and so that's their habit, and you're going to see that. Same book. When demons walk among us, they choose the time and the place, unlike younger souls, but there are no virgin births or immaculate conceptions. It must be stressed that, as a race, 
the ancient ones come infrequently and are not fighting the turf war in heaven as our primitive mythology suggests. Joan of Arc was an incarnated demon, as were Buddha, Christ, and Buddha, but then so was Charles Manson. <clears throat> Interesting. A juvenile nursery rhyme goes like this. There was a little girl who had a little curl right in the middle of her forehead, third eye. And when she was good, she was very, very good. But when she was bad, she was horrid. Passions are magnified in those who are more awakened spiritually. This tendency, skipping to the back, this tendency to, to worship demons denotes character weakness. Lord Egan observes that those who attack him for claiming to be a demon are themselves demon worshippers who cannot kick the habit. Always remember that demons are merely a manifestation of the future of our race. We are all inherently divine, the co-creators of the new world order. In this fashion, we shall create gods in our own image. We are the creators, and we are the created. I mean, it's a very interesting remark, uh, you know, especially the, the demons being the future of the human race, and then you got the whole <laughs> new world order like this was <laughs> a little much, huh? Then we have... Uh, Angels of Chaos by uh, Freighter Elijah. Let me see. He says, A thought concerning the new Star Wars movie to come. It is episode one, which is the youth of Anakin Skywalker. Thinking on this, the rebirth of the villain of villains, Darth Vader, Doth, which is, by the way, like uh, kind of like the Hebrew version of hell. You know, it's commonly used as the abyss or hell. I don't it's one of those. It's an extra dimension, a prison dimension. The once dead, now back before his death, before his fall, yet again. I believe that this is tied firmly into the collective net, network submines and the thanatogenesis of the grand nemesis. Some correlation to the phantom menace on the rise for humanity in the near future. It's very cryptic, but... Uh, just interesting how, you know, he even, you know, this has been mentioned in books that I've come across. You know, the whole the Skywalker thing. Here's a book called The Beholders of Night. The left-hand path is the strengthening of the mind and the possibility of one becoming as a separate being, not in order with the natural universe that he or she is uniquely different. This is the path of Lucifer and Lilith. Those who stand within the dark wells and have illuminated the black flame of self-acknowledgement and the joys of the waking and dreaming world. The left-hand path tests the individual, uniting the demonic with the angel and the balance between the two. You know, you'll find that when they're speaking about the world of the astral, when, you know, they're not in their bodies and they're talking about the astral world, the spirit world, they usually call it the dreaming world or the astral world, you know. So that's another one of their little um, code words for that, that extra dimension. Um, and you also notice a lot of times that they're, they're talking about the unification of a demonic with your angelic counterpart. You know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, you know, the Egyptians, the Muslims, the Christians. Uh, the Christians don't say that everybody's assigned a demon, but the Muslims do. And, and the, the Illuminati believe this too, that everybody's assigned a, an angelic and a demonic counterpart. And uh, what you'll see often is that this transformation involves this merger between the two. And, you know, that, that kind of goes along perfectly with the, the cover of the book Serpents of Wisdom because you got two all-seeing eyes, one in heaven and, you know, one in the ground, or one one on earth, you know, uh, injecting energy into, you know, these transformed people. And the whole book is about transforming. And, you know, they're talking about the demonic and the angelic counterpart merging into one. Now, this is called uh, Prelude to the Black Arts by Nate Levin. Okay, it says, so if you can't favorably favorably command demons by hook and crook, what do you have that could persuade a demon to help you by choice? Why should they be attracted to you? What could you tempt with them with? The simple en answer is energy. Humans can generate appreciable amount quantities of this type of energy that demons crave. What kind of energy is that? Why, my dear